Done with sports talk. Worldwide. With some news from the world of boxing. So y'all know what time it is. You ain't in a rush to get concussed. Baby February the sec- uh, the 2nd is going to be booming. In a light heavyweight division of fight that, you know, we kind of forget about. But it's going to be a big one. Let's remember, Sergey, Sergey the Crusher Kovalev, we know him, in his rematch versus Elida Alvarez. Sergey Kovalev was knocked out, I think it was round seven, the first fight. The rematch is on on February the 2nd. It's going to be in Frisco, Texas. Baby, let's get ready to rumble. This is going to be a good fight, uh, a very good fight. Kovalev has only lost three fi- uh, three fights, man. To this Alvarez and two-time Andre Ward. He was the crusher before that. And it is, it is what it is. Now, this fight, first fight, <clears throat> people <clears throat> were calling this a lucky punch. Sergei Kovalev and a lot of his fans were calling it a lucky punch, failing to realize that the guy was in the fight the whole time. Sometimes people don't even look at slow motion. You know, when Elida Alvarez was jabbing him in the fight, they were showing in slow motion. I don't know why people just act like he was not in the fight and he got lucky in round seven. That's not what I saw. Right? That was a good fight up until then. I would have Kovalev. He was probably leading the fight, but he wasn't dominating the fight until he got knocked out. Uh, Elida Alvarez was full of confidence at the time of the knockout. So let's expect something good. Now, I don't like the narrative. I'm just going to tell you straight up what it's going to be. If Sergei Kovalev loses, he will be considered old. Right? You can hear it in the, the narrative in the, in, in the articles. He will be considered old, even though Elida Alvarez is only one year younger than him. If he wins, he will be considered huge back. You know, I just don't like the fact that Sergei Kovalev was in the pound for pound list, right? He gets beat by somebody, and Elida Alvarez is not even in the pound for pound to replace him. The guy who beats him should replace him. Nowhere to be found. Same way back in the Adonis Stevenson. Adonis Stevenson was never in the pound for pound list, even though him and Sergei Kovalev uh, were equal, actually. Kovalev, number three pound for pound, um, Adonis Stevenson with one loss and longer reigning was never in there, right? Someone beats Adonis Stevenson, Wojciech, and his trainer, Tony Atlas, who has a vote, wants to put Wojciech in the pound for pound, right? Not Adonis Stevenson, who should have been there the whole time. If Kovalev was in there, I told you, Adonis Stevenson should have been there right next to Kovalev, either above him or right below him, because Kovalev was the one who pulled out of a purse bid when they were supposed to fight each other. Even knowing that, the writers still put Kovalev in and not Stevenson. But someone beats Stevenson, then he should be there. Right? Someone beats Kovalev, and he shouldn't be there. Guys, you feeling me? Okay? Right? Same thing. Goes on. And that's what I'm just saying. This is the kind of things that's been going on. Listen, a lot of Alvarez is just as old as the Sergei Kovalev. He's about one year younger. So we don't need to get any of that crap going on. This is just a good fight. Uh, Sergei Kovalev has got a lot of uh, chances. He lost the award. It had to be an immediate rematch, didn't it? Right? He loses to Elida Alvarez. It has to be an immediate rematch, doesn't it? Right? And we've just been talking about things like, did Canelo have to rematch Laura or Trout? No. Did Gennady Golovkin have to rematch Danny Jacobs? No. Right? These have to happen right away. Elida Alvarez didn't have to get a chance to go to back to Canada and have a voluntary defense. Right? Canelo beats Gennady Golovkin, he gets a voluntary against someone, right? Fielding. Didn't happen there. These are the things that just are not consistent in boxing, and it is what it is. Now, when it comes to uh, Sergei Kovalev, you know, we know his transgressions. We know he might even have a, um, he might be in trouble right now with the law. Whatever. The man is a crusher. When he gets in the ring, he's trying to knock your head off. We know that. But when he loses, there's things that happen. He's had three separate coaches in his last three matches. When he lost the ward, he was blaming it on John David Jackson. Then he got a Russian uh, guy to do his fight, right? Uh, the guy he's been dealing with, he was saying that it was um, a language barrier, and he still lost to Elida Alvarez, right? Now he has a new trainer now, right? Uh, that's three trainers, you know, in a row. At some point, it might be you. The thing is, no matter what we're thinking about the fight, you know, we're looking at inside informations because we want to see what, you know, how people are feeling. We're leading up to the fight. All of that is cool. But at the end of the day, guys, Elana Alvarez versus Sergei Kovalev is going to be a good, good fight and a significant fight. 
you're looking at what Kovalev has something to prove, but so does Elida Alvarez. Try to make sure that wasn't a fluke, it wasn't a lucky punch, and I need to be recognized now. My time is now, too. I'm also over 30, about 34, 35 years old, right? Kovalev has to prove I'm not gone yet. Don't even try it. So when you got those things going, these two guys, there will be fireworks on February the 2nd. So bottom line, just like most of the good ones, just tune in. We'll talk about it afterwards. Don't miss sports talk. Worldwide. And I'm about to hear y'all.